So the goal by doing all of this is to dilate myself so that way I don't have to go in at a one potentially if I do have to get induced. I'm dying laughing at myself. Walk your ass off guys. I think I lost I'm my mucus plugs. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome here, my name is Kyleen. I just want to start off the video with saying I'm sorry if I have a huge noticeable lack of energy, but I'm freaking tired. I'm a day away from 38 weeks, and I'm just done, so I'm sorry if uh, you can tell I'm kind of dragging, but I really wanted to share this information because this is something that I'm really, really, really hoping helps me not be induced and allow my body to go into labor on its own. And I know that there's a lot of other people that may be in the same situation that I am where your doctor is recommending you be induced and you don't really want to be, but it's hard not to just trust them and do what they say, but you also kind of want to have the baby before your induction date. So I'm hoping that this is helpful to any of you guys. If you guys are new, I am pregnant for the second time. My first pregnancy, I had gestational diabetes, and my second pregnancy, I've had gestational diabetes. And so both times I have been encouraged to, well, I guess encouraged is not really the right word because they tell me like, you can't go over this date. And with my son, it was 40 weeks, and this time with her, it's 39 weeks. And my induction with my son was not good. I kind of wanna explain this so that it makes sense as to why I really don't wanna be induced, but I also wanna explain it because I know that my induction process probably wasn't the best way that they did it and I'm hoping if I do get to that point and have to do it, we can do it better. But basically I went in at a one, they broke my water right away, which I don't even know how they got up in there and broke it. I was on Pitocin right away, um, I didn't do any Cervidil and I was on the strongest amount pretty quickly because they were just trying to get me progressed. That was at 7 a.m. is when I started. I think they broke my water around noon because I was still at a one. And then once that happened, it did progress things. And I labored until I think like four o'clock and I was at a five. And then I got an epidural within an hour, I was at a nine. And then I was stuck at a nine from 5 p.m. until I had my son at midnight. I had a lot of cervical swelling. His head was stuck in there for a long time. They were really afraid that my cervix was going to burst and that I was gonna have to have a C-section. So they ended up just giving me, um, what was it, Benadryl, I believe. I took a nap, it calmed it down, and I ended up being able to deliver him vaginally. But yeah, the whole process just was very forced in my opinion, and I don't think I should have done that starting at a one. Uh, I feel like they definitely should have started with Cervidil or something else to progress me before and I definitely think they should have waited to break my water. So those are two things that I really don't want to repeat. But like I said, for this pregnancy, they do want me to be induced at the 39 week mark and so I'm really trying to do things to progress myself before that day comes if that does have to happen. I will explain my backup option if I do have to be induced. Um, there's kind of a different process we're gonna take with it because I've really emphasized to my doctors that I don't want it to go the way that it did last time, but I'll explain all of that at the end of the video. But these are the things that I plan to do to naturally induce my labor. Uh, like I said, I'll be 38 weeks tomorrow, so for the next week, this is what I'm gonna be trying to do pretty much daily. If I can do everything daily, great. If not, I will try and do them at least a few times throughout the week. But I also did want to say why they want me to be induced. It's because my baby is super big. She's measuring in the 96th percentile. Because of my gestational diabetes, I have also had high fluid levels, which cause a risk of health to me and the baby. Um, I have had them controlled, but they are still on like the higher end of the range. But that is why they want me to be induced, and that is why I'm trying to get this baby out before then. <laughs> I think I lost my mucus plug over the weekend. Okay, I'm grabbing the camera because I don't think this is the start to my labor vlog, but I wanted to record it because I think I lost my mucus plug. It was not like the bloody part of it. It was just like the other part. And I've had a ton of like pretty strong contractions, but they don't hurt. Um, I contract all the time if you guys don't know. In the last two days, they definitely feel like they've been picking up a little bit, but they're not painful. Like I can talk through them, like all that kind of thing. But we got a little scared and we packed our hospital bag officially and like put it into a suitcase. So like if anything happens through the night tonight, we can just like grab it and go. But it's kind of crazy. I just feel like we're getting really close. I feel like I'm having labor signs and I never really had labor signs with Rocky. And so I'm kind of like in my head thinking like there's no way she'll come on her own. But I don't know. I don't want to be naive either. <laughs> I want to like make sure I'm prepared. I never ended up losing any blood. It was just that like jelly like 
substance but I never had that happen with Rocky so that was really encouraging to me that like labor is actually starting to go a little bit um my body showed no signs of labor with rocky like at all sorry there's so many like disclaimers and things i want to chat about before i get into what i'm going to be doing but i also wanted to state that my body does not have a hard time contracting um the part that it has a hard time with is dilating and softening or effacing or however you want to word that but i've been having braxton hick contractions since i was literally like 18 weeks pregnant uh, by 28 weeks pregnant, I'm pretty sure I got at least like 20 a day and at this point I get like 30 to 40 a day I feel like I contract all day long whether I'm sitting standing lying down doing nothing doing everything like my body contracts a ton um, I have noticed in the past few days that some of the contractions are getting a lot more intense They don't hurt, but they definitely feel stronger But I usually just lay down because I'm just like wanting to wait a little bit before I have the baby um, I didn't really want to have her in the 37 week mark. I was trying to get to 38 weeks So I would just lay down and it would go away. So clearly a sign that that Wasn't actually real labor, but my body does a really good job at contracting So the goal by doing all of this is to dilate myself so that way I don't have to go in at a one potentially if I do have to get induced and to just make my labor a lot shorter and easier by already progressing my body also wanted to say I'm clearly not a doctor, so ask your doctor about any of these things that I'm showing if you're worried. Uh, the majority of them are not anything that would be harmful, but I just wanted to say I'm not a doctor. Ask your doctor if you have questions. Okay, so when I started thinking about doing this, I knew I didn't want to do like the typical things that everyone talks about um, when it comes to inducing their labor. Those things are like the dates, the red raspberry leaf tea, um, the what else is it pineapple juice like things like that i tried a lot of that with rocky and it didn't work for me and i probably didn't have enough of any of that to make it work but for me i have gestational diabetes so i cannot eat like numerous amounts of dates a day dates are very high in carbs and therefore sugar pineapple is the same way i can't just eat like a full pineapple that would like send my blood through the roof and so i couldn't do those things and the other things i just they didn't work for me so I tried to find other things and from the research I've done a lot of these things have shown to be very um, successful within like 24 hours a lot of people say that these things put themselves into labor so I'm really excited to share with you guys if this is your first time trying to naturally induce your labor hopefully I save you some research and some time but the first thing that I stumbled across was the miles circuit which this actually popped up on my suggested videos on YouTube I wasn't even searching for it which I thought was Kind of cool i'm like is that a sign <laughs> but basically it's a series of three like exercises they're not really like crazy big movements but you're supposed to hold them each for 30 minutes the purpose with this is to get the baby aligned in your birthing canal in the most optimal birthing position so that way the baby is aligned in your pelvis and it just makes the whole process a lot smoother so weird just even trying to get into that position it did not feel natural so i'm gonna put a pillow underneath my chest and hopefully that will help i'm dying laughing at myself how the heck did they just like lay their chest on the floor i don't think i can do that i think i'm just gonna have to be like on my forearms i feel so unathletic right now i Okay, I just tried to film all of that and show you guys and I'm dying laughing at myself because I it just didn't go well So I'm gonna re film what I said and just show you guys the chaos that was I think by the end I got into the right position and so I will redo that but do not take this as a how-to I will link the video I am following down below this is just me showing you <laughs> me doing it but basically like I said before it's three exercises that you are supposed to hold for 30 minutes. The first one is called, let me look it up, the open knee chest position. And so basically you get into a cat cow position, you lower your chest as low as you can to the ground, stick your butt up high in the air, and you're supposed to um, allow the baby to kind of go back up a little bit so that way once you stand up and you're done, they can move into your birthing canal in the right position. Don't quote me on that, I'm pretty sure that's what uh, she said, but yeah, you can also do this on the couch, but it is a more intense like decline And I feel like for me like the blood is just gonna rush to my head and I already am not feeling super athletic So I'm not gonna do that But if you feel like you can you definitely should and if you start to contract while doing this She says to hold it 
um, and stay through the contractions and just try and really reach that 30 minute mark. I'm gonna move on to the next one just to show you guys. This one is like the exaggerated lying position, I think is what it's called. Yeah, exaggerated side lying position and they want you to start on the left side. Um, I remember her saying, if you do the circuit multiple times, start with the left and then the next time you do the circuit, do the right and just like keep switching off but she emphasized starting on the left. And you basically want your left leg as straight as possible and then you want your right leg as high as possible. So you're gonna lay like on a couch or a bed and prop up your leg, your right leg, with as many pillows as you need um, to get your leg up. And I believe again, this is to get just the baby into the right position for optimal birthing. I do suggest for this one to fall asleep. I mean, you're straight up like laying down. If you can, take a nap because again, 30 minutes is a long time when you're holding something. The the last position is called moving lunges, which don't be scared because when I heard her say that, I was like, I cannot lunge for 30 minutes straight. <laughs> But you're not really actually moving. Um, you can like kind of sway. But the biggest thing is, is they want your leg at a 90 degree angle, kind of out and down. So that way you're completely like opening up your pelvis to again, allow room for baby to descend. Biggest thing though they said is you don't want to go past your knee. You don't want to like lunge past because that will actually close off your pelvis. So you really just kind of want that like perfect 90 degree. You can do this on like stairs. You can do it if you have like a table that's the right height. This one I would say turn on a show or something because you are basically like standing the entire time. So yeah, that's how I'll be doing the mile circuit. Like I said, I'm gonna try and do this every single day if I can. Um, I do think they want you to do the exercises back to back. So it'll probably be during like Rocky's naps or um, at the end of the day. But I've really heard that this one works. People normally only get through the first two and they say they're in labor. Okay, the next thing I have been doing is watching a ton of Bridget Taylor's YouTube videos. If you guys don't know who she is on YouTube, she is a birthing doula and she really advocates for just like a positive birth experience. She has so many videos, but I've been trying to focus on the ones that are around labor and labor inducing. Um, if you want to have an epidural free birth, I think she does a lot of content on that too. So I'll leave her channel linked down below for anyone who's curious, but I just watched one this morning that was um, kind of talking about what to do once early labor starts and how to like progress it. And then I've also watched one about just like 10 ways to naturally induce your labor. So I'm kind of like combining a lot of that information into one. She is really big on the birthing ball, which I feel like did not totally help me last time. Although I was just kind of sitting and bouncing. I'm on it right now, if you can't tell. Um, but her more so way of using it was to again, Get your hips and your pelvis in a position where baby can optimally descend. The bouncing I think does help with like gravity to kind of like pull the baby down, but I feel like she talked more about kind of getting the baby aligned. I wanted to share the couple ones that I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna try my best to do these like while I am playing with Rocky in the playroom instead of just like sitting on the floor. I've actually been sitting on this ball quite a bit while playing with Rocky over the last like month and just kind of bouncing it. It's so funny, Rocky will sit on the floor and he'll like go like this too. <laughs> yeah, anytime that I'm just kind of like sitting and I could be doing this, I'm gonna try and do this throughout the next week. So the first one is just like the rotating your hips. It's basically just moving your hips in circles. She says to do one direction for two to five minutes and then switch. The other one are pelvic tilt. I think her video shows like a pelvis and how like your tailbone is kind of like at the bottom of it. And like these tilts kind of help like push it out of the way so that way the baby can like have room to come through. Wait, okay, those pelvic tilts, I feel like I could really feel the baby like being compressed down. That was weird. I'm definitely gonna be doing those. I'm also going to be doing the leaning forward. It's kind of similar to the first exercise of the mouse circuit that just like, again, leaves gravity to kind of pull the baby and allow them to like get right into the right position for the birthing canal. So this ball and I are gonna be best friends, even though I swear it didn't help me with Rocky, but now thinking back to what I did to try and progress my labor with Rocky, I just kind of like sat here and like didn't do much. And I should have like got up and like kept on going on walks and stuff, but I remember just feeling like I didn't want to do all that. I just wanted to kind of just like wait until he was here. And this time I'm feeling different because I don't want to be induced. Another thing that Bridget talks about a lot is movement and how important that is for the progression of labor. Her little saying is movement is improvement. 
and so if you start to feel like you're having contractions she said like if you want labor to keep going you need to keep moving sitting down is just gonna kind of calm them down which i do feel like that is a key aspect as to something i didn't do with rocky and i'm hoping that it'll help this time is like after you do like say those ball exercises and maybe go walk after that like do them kind of stacked so that way like it really helps your body but also just like getting in a lot of walking throughout the day is really good to progress yourself for labors i think the key thing with this is walking a far distance and then doing the curb walking too um if you guys don't know what the curb walking is you kind of walk on the street and then your other foot is on the sidewalk so you're just like going up and down you can do this on stairs too just going long distances yesterday we went on a walk after dinner and i did a lap with which i think is like a third of a mile and i started feeling like kind of intense contractions but i was like i'm not ready for this baby yet so we just like went home but i feel like if i would have kept going that could have done something for sure so we're definitely going to start doing more nightly walks we used to walk a ton after dinner but lately we've been kind of lazy so we're gonna be doing that every single night of the week and then also if i'm feeling contractions i'm gonna want to try and walk um, and just like progress them i do think i'm gonna wait to do that until the weekend until i have help with rocky because one i probably can't even do that with rocky but two I just am gonna need help if I'm like going into labor. So we'll probably start that on Saturday and really make an effort to do that Saturday and Sunday, maybe Friday night as well, um, or at the nights in general. So yeah, walk your ass off guys. Another thing that is on Bridget's like top 10 things to induce your labor naturally is nipple stimulation. And this was actually one of the things that my doctor recommended too. She told me to wait until after 37 weeks, so I haven't done it yet, but I am gonna start doing that um, starting today too. But basically you can use your hands to hand express colostrum or you can use a pump. This is just a manual hand pump. This is what I used when I pumped with Rocky. You can save the colostrum to give to the baby. It's really, really good. I'm also going to start putting on nipple balm because I heard that that can really help with breastfeeding and preventing your nipples from drying out. And of course in the process that's nipple stimulation too, but those, what they do is they release oxytocin in the body, which is something that stimulates contractions and it also helps soften your cervix. So that's effacement and dilation. Um, hopefully that it's helping the other thing that my doctor said I asked her I was like, okay How can I get this baby out on my own and she was like the two things that I only really see work are nipple stimulation and sex and at 38 weeks <laughs> I Truly just don't want to be touched. I feel like I am just so large and not at all attractive But I hear that that helps a ton I did do this and try it with Rocky and it didn't help uh, but I'm also thinking that it needs to be done like during the day and then you can go walk after and that would really help because I would always contract but then I would just go to bed and it wouldn't really do anything. So that is something that I'm going to be trying to do as often as I can during this week. I feel so weird saying that because I know that family watches my videos. So hopefully they didn't watch this one, but yeah, that's how I got pregnant. So. Bridget also left other tips. Um, they're like the same kind of thing with like the red raspberry leaf tea, like spicy foods, all that kind of stuff. But I was trying to stick to things that are like things I could physically do in this video because a lot of the other things you have to like go buy and you have to consume them excessively. And I just didn't want to do that. So yeah. The last thing I wanted to mention that I'm going to be doing all week, every single day, is drinking as much water as possible. Giving birth is literally like running a marathon. It is so much work on your body physically. And if you just think about the fact that you're literally pushing a human out of your body, you need to stay hydrated for that. That is exactly what I plan to do. I don't want to just do this the day before. Like I want to be as hydrated as possible. So each day I'm going to shoot for around a gallon um, and just try my best to drink as much water as possible. If you guys have been around for a while, you know that I love my Epic Water Filters water bottle. And this is a really good way that I get in a lot of water. This bottle alone is 48 ounces. 
So just drinking a little over two of these is around a gallon. What's really cool about their water bottles is the filter. So this filter is what is connected through the straw and it removes 99.99% of all the contaminants in water, which basically just ensures that you're drinking clean and toxin-free water. That's super important no matter if you're pregnant or not, but for me, pregnant, about to give birth, giving all of whatever I consume to my baby, it is extra, extra important. Another thing that I really love about these water bottles is it has significantly reduced the amount of single-use plastic water bottles that I have used. We used to buy at least a case per week and we have not bought one since getting these water bottles back in October, I believe. We also got the filter for the fridge so that way the fridge water that comes out of our fridge is filtered um, as well. So that even makes it so I can drink out of other water bottles like my Stanley cups that you guys know I love too. But yeah, it's just super comforting knowing that our water is super, super clean. We have some for Rocky, he takes those around too. So if we're filling up like a splash pad or at a restaurant, we know that he's getting filtered water. We also have the pitchers, so that way we can like pour it out for guests and just have it on hand here at home too. Their filters last up to three to four months with everyday use. Um, so if you guys wanna check it out, I do have a code. The code Kylene will save you 20% off anything from their site. Like I said, you can't really go wrong with any of the things, but it just really depends on what you need for your family. But yeah, staying hydrated is really, really important through the labor and delivery and postpartum experience. And then you add to like nursing and the amount of fluids that you're gonna produce from that. So you just wanna stay on top of your water for sure. I wanted to end this video with kind of explaining what will happen if all of this doesn't work for me and just kind of like my plans to go about an induction in the least like invasive possible way. So if I cannot get my labor going by 38 weeks and five days, they did say that they will strip my membranes. I'm starting to question when I want to do this because my induction day is scheduled for the 39 week mark it is march 30th and so march 28th is when they could do the membrane strip but i'm kind of thinking that i would just want to do it the night before so that way if that doesn't work then the cervidil pitocin like kind of combination will and it'll all be super close so hopefully it'll just kind of like get things going i'm also trying to figure out things with nathaniel's work and just like his time off and i'm trying not to like prolong this process so i kind of feel like the pressure of that too which he of course isn't putting that on me i'm just trying to make the time off that he has like the best that we can have of course too there's coordinating like who's gonna watch rocky and like the more like planned out it can be, the better and easier it will be. Um, so that's kind of why I'm like overthinking like when to do all of this. But I definitely do want to strip my membranes. Um, I want that to try and help dilate me a little bit. Um, my friends have done that and they always say that it helps a ton. I've heard so many stories from you guys that it helps. And so that is something that I didn't do with Rocky because I was like, you know what, whatever, I'm just getting induced. I might as well just like not do it. And I'm realizing now it would have been beneficial to do it. And it probably would have gotten me past just the one that I went in at. I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow where they're going to check my fluid levels again. And we're just going to kind of see where I'm at. But I'm considering asking them about the midwife's brew, which I know is super controversial. And I don't know if I'm going to do it. But I want to hear my doctor's opinion on it if I were to do it uh, kind of coupled with the stripping of the membranes. I've heard so many stories from a lot of people that say that that like did it so quick. And so I'm a little intrigued, um, but I also don't want to shit myself. I know that's like very personal, but that is something that can happen. And then I also don't want any risks of like the baby too. I haven't really heard any horror stories. I just hear people saying it's unsafe, but I haven't heard any stories go wrong. But like I said, I just wanna ask them. I'm not sure that I would do that, but that is definitely something that I'm considering a little bit more. If you're not someone who would do it, that's you. Everyone's bodies are their own. But that is something I'm considering. But like I said, if I change the strip to Tuesday night and then do the cervical, Wednesday morning. I don't think I would need to do that. And then it will prevent me from, you know, just having that unpleasant bowel experience. I did decide to look up like negative effects of Pitocin because I was trying to weigh the difference between like negative effects of Pitocin versus negative effects of castor oil. One is kind of more natural and the other one is a drug. And um, I just wanted to see, cause no one really talks about the negative sides of Pitocin, but they do of the castor oil. And I did see that it can lower baby's heart rate and lower their oxygen levels. And I don't know if this is correlated, but when I was um, in labor with Rocky, I had to be on oxygen and I was contracting too much. And so they had to like take me off the Pitocin. Like there was definitely some complications with that. And I almost had a C-section and 
Um, my cervix was swelling a lot, so like I don't know what all of that went to, but that route almost wasn't safe either. So I'm just trying to figure out what is gonna be best for me and baby. And so I'm gonna chat with my OB quite a bit about that tomorrow. So if all of that and all the things I'm gonna be doing for the next week don't work, I do have an induction scheduled for the 30th um, in the morning. And basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna give me Cervidal, I think it is, and they're gonna monitor me for like two to three hours. And if labor starts to progress, they will admit me. And if it doesn't, they'll allow me to go home and labor at home. If it doesn't progress, I would then go back into the hospital later that evening to another round. And if that doesn't work, I think they would then move on to Pitocin. I did have the hospital call me today to just kind of confirm all of that and chat a little bit, but they said next week, like on Monday or Tuesday, they will call and let me know a little bit more detail. So I'm just kind of waiting to see more about that process and I'll probably ask my doctor tomorrow too, but that is the goal so that way I don't have to go straight to Pitocin and hopefully I can just skip it all in general. But yeah, that is kind of just the plan. I feel like for this next week, like what I showed you wasn't a crazy amount of things, but it was definitely enough that I think will help. A part of me also does like the planned date and just knowing that like we have a plan for Rocky, we have a plan for Nathaniel's work and like we can just show up at the scheduled time. Like my type A personality really does like that but then I also want to avoid Pitocin. So that's kind of where I'm at. I feel like I've literally said the same things a thousand times. So I'm so sorry if this is annoying you, but that is what is going on with me um, in my body and why I'm doing all of these things. I did also want to mention that this is the last video I'm going to upload until my birth vlog. If I do end up going to 39 weeks, I have a week left. And so I kind of just want to enjoy that time with my family and just kind of relax as a family of three. And then I am going to film as much as I can of the birth. I'm gonna try and film the 24 hours with a newborn. Definitely gonna film Rocky and her meeting and just like talk about postpartum. I'm really excited for like postpartum content, but also just bear with me because I will be adjusting to having two kids. But yeah, if you guys want more current or up-to-date um, updates, I will be keeping up with you guys on Instagram stories and then also TikTok. I've been posting quite a bit there too. So make sure you're following me there. Both of those are just at Kyleen Rael. So I hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.